the four cloud models and when to use each of them. The National Institute of Standards and Technologies recognizes four models of cloud, or three plus hybrid, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Private cloud, in a lot of ways, is what people used to call server farms. It's cloud infrastructure that is fully owned by an organization. So, for example, Microsoft would own a bunch of servers and those servers would only be used for Microsoft stuff. They wouldn't sell them out to anybody else. There'd be no third party. And they might exist on site or they might exist out in a network operations center somewhere, but they would still be fully owned by that one organization, in our example, Microsoft. A community cloud is a cloud that is owned by generally a third party, but all of the servers are united in a single purpose. Now, a community cloud could be something like, we're only going to serve mail off of this thing, or it might be all legal database stuff, or it might be that a bunch of medical practitioners got together and built a community cloud so that they could meet HIPAA compliance with all of the employees operating the cloud and not have to worry about things. Public cloud is truly a general use cloud. And in a public cloud, the same physical machine might be serving porn for one client and distance learning for a second client and reader rabbit online for a third client, all on the same piece of hardware. There's no segregation. And so your data and other people's data live next to each other. In a hybrid cloud, you're combining two or more of these models into a single architecture. This is often useful if your application can be segmented in such a way. Now, there's a couple of different models. One is cloud bursting, where you say, we're entirely private, but if we get too much load, we push some of it off into the public or the community cloud. Or we have these dedicated resources and we burst out to the community resources. And this can be great if you are running an organization that for the most part you want to keep stuff on premise because you can keep your costs down. You don't have to pay for the cage. You don't have to pay for as much for the support. Maybe you got a better deal on bandwidth, whatever the reason. But occasionally, you burst to 20% over capacity. You can spill out to that community and only pay for the resources that are consumed. And so you can have that elasticity while keeping your core costs low. You can also run hybrid clouds where you say, okay, all of my HIPAA compliance documents have to be kept on-premise in a private cloud. But a lot of the resources around those documents, things like just the you know, banners that run up and make the, the rest of the, the web page, you know, the, oh, where is we're going to serve the JavaScript and the Ajax and all those things, can be served out of the public cloud, either via CDN or via, you know, some other service, or maybe you're doing all of your authentication initially through public cloud out on you know Amazon's infrastructure but once the user is authenticated the data is then served off of servers that are on your local via a VPN or via reverse caching proxy or one of those things so that you can maintain your HIPAA compliance but get the scale for unauthenticated users out at the public cloud and those are a couple of the ways that you'd use the private cloud, the community cloud, the public cloud, and the hybrid cloud. And we'll go into each of those in a little more detail in future videos, but those are the three core models plus hybrid that combines any of the models in any combination.